Okay, so greetings everyone. So right now, it's a working session that we're continuing. So I haven't, this is actually being alive, so we definitely might hear other people on the call. Definitely trying to give back to the community and help the community any way we can here at Windmill Code. So what we're going ahead and working on is, um, yeah, right now, basically we're having this form Right, and then we want to integrate with our Python backend. Right, we want to integrate with our Python backend here, right, in order to um, scary, but um, in order to um, have this form form information submitted, right, for the business requirement needs, right. So here it's going to be email, but later down the line we're going to try to store this data on the blockchain as well as on databases. So thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. And most importantly, reach out to in the comment section for any help, tips, and suggestions. All right, so. All right, so if you see here, um, all this, this, all this field, all this functionality, right, what we want to go ahead and do, once we hit, and sub, hit that submit button, um, what we want to go ahead and do is want to implement that best practice of conformity, right? So basically one of the ways to do that is to look at what you've done before. So you have this logic here, right? So we don't have any wallets in this form. This is just a collegiate sign up, right? So root form group valid, right? So then, right, if it's invalid, you want to fill out all the, have the user fill out all the required fields, right? But it definitely does look like from here, some of these fields aren't triggering. Right, so that's this field, this field, this field, this field. Yeah, so some of these values aren't triggering. Man, yeah, so let's kind of look at their our. Right, so I have some form arrays here. Right, so all my fields, right, so all my fields are starting to validate, right? So now basically, right, in order to send this information, I don't want to sit here and type to fill out this form and then do development. It takes a lot of time. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go back to my automation service, right? And I have some logic here and then definitely want to follow the principle of conformity, right? So this is my um, collegiate sign up, collegiate sign up, as you could see. Right, I just want to go ahead and make sure this is my submit button, but now I need to fill out the form, right? So basically this logic here is that submit is going to call another function called fill out form out form. All right, that's going to be the logic right there. All right, and now I'm gonna call this. So definitely um, have some automation going on here. In order for this automation to work, I, all these values have to return void, right? Um, I think that's one of the things we wanna kinda of do with this automation here. Right? Because if it returns a value and then look at what this no op is doing, I'm gonna try to put these all together. If we put these values together, we try to see what's everything's, and then if we get a return, right, we see that it's becoming an empty value, right? So if a value tries to return something in here, it'll break our code as it goes to production, right? So none of these, so everything in automation, right? It's not really just a standard, right? It's just really um insight in this specific project that we're working on that nothing here can, um, can basically return, right? So this dot, Collegiate sign up name, fill out form. All 
All right, so I got an error. Let's see where the error may be. Okay, so yeah, sometimes when it comes to these live reloading software, um, it doesn't completely like, you know, it's definitely a lot of timing issues, right? So even though there's no error in your code, you may get an error on your screen. Sometimes you have to refresh or wait for all of its uh, logic to catch up, right? So what I want to go ahead and do here is like I said, like, like I said, again, I want to see what I've done before in the past. Right. If it's your first time doing things, you want to follow best practices. That's going to be your before, but you already done it. Then the best practices ultimately, um, what you learned, right. From the best practice books. So, all right. So here, and then since this form comes up immediately, yeah, this could start out as zero. Then I could say zero plus 100. And then I think I'm gonna have to provide the file inputs. Hi, dot subscribe. Right, and then I think since I'm gonna be, this is kind of really interesting. I hope it's like the last time I do it, but if not, I'm definitely going to write a little schematic for myself. So that immediately fires. So Basically, I want to see all the different fields out here. But fields. All right, I want to go ahead and console log this. I want to see what I'm working with. And then this is not cop. This is known as a collegiate sign up name. So nothing's going to be available as I, as I see it right now. Right, so there's one really one form, so I guess it's just safe to say, you know, I don't like to. So W on the form, right, so I, if I kind of think about it, WL field. All right, so, well, practically not a direct child, I suppose, right? There's some division there. But I want to just basically use that function to get all the references to my fields, right? So I got like 14 different fields here, right? Each is a field, each is a field, each is a field, right? So now I just want to understand what I'm looking at. I want to open as I open it up. Right, I'm practically looking for this. I'm practically looking for the value right here. Right, because the field is just like a container, but what I'm really interested in is in its value. So, let's see what that looks like. Our console, so there's, there's all different types of fields. All right, so we get that section back now. And we want to see what's inside. All right, all right, so now I get to see all these values. I get to see 68, all right? So not necessarily, I, I wanna see everything in there, right? I know there's just 14 fields. I wanna keep that 14 fields, right? Cause I, I know that there's several chips in here. Right, so I definitely wanna keep that at 14, right? So, so basically, right, what I wanna go ahead and do is I wanna, could provide some automation, right? So I want to kind of fill these up with like random values here, as you as as I see fit. Right, and then ultimately, maybe if you get around to it, maybe set up a, um, a custom form validator, or check if this one exists, right? Because I'm using a form validator library, 
to see basically if I click on email, then this gets required. And if I click on LinkedIn, then that gets required, right? And then so on and so forth, right? So let's close this out. So basically, right, so now these values, I, I kind of want to filter it out against these values, right? So this is good. So I see I have the only input, I have my double options, I have options, I have chips, and I have file both, right? So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and separate everything out there. So let's say let input fields. Right, so these are my input fields, and I'm gonna kind of work out things at one at a time. All right, so now I'll kind of use the logic. So let option fields. All right, so definitely don't want to repeat myself four times. So let's try to do this instead, right? I could say let input fields, options fields, I think chip fields. And then I think the last thing is file fields. So upload fields. Then I have a function, I have a little function here. I'll set this equal to array. So doubling all input, doubling all options, WL chips, and then WML file upload. I want to say map selector. I say return. Right, and then obviously that selector is going to go at the end of it. Plus, like so. That result, and then, it, then I want to use object-oriented programming, right? Functional program, the difference between functional programming and object-oriented programming is that functional programming, you can't console log. Right, so basically this value, I just return it right away. I don't get to see object oriented program is that each step of the process, right? I actually set it to a variable so I could do things like console log, right? So eight, three, two, and then undefined, right? So, so let's try to see what this is. This is a material, this is WML chip for the most part. Right, that's a text area in there. So WML field. It's not indicating what it is. WML chips. Huh. Oh, a second. I got my chips. And then I would say return a result. Yeah, that was missing something. All right, sounds good. All right, so there are all my values like so. All right, so now what I want to go ahead and do, I want to see how I did this before. So basically, these are my input fields. Right, so the, uh, these are basically my input fields. And, you know, I think what I've done is I practically s sat here one by one, right, try to figure it all out. But I think what I'm going to do So elements, right? So for each if we just want to make this quick for myself. Le so that value. Alright, so it doesn't think it's a value, so I have to cast the like so. Input element.
and it still thinks it's a type any. Nice array. Good. All right, so now equals faker dot name dot full name. Now I really kind of wanna. Right, so value and then I'm going to use util service. All right, so. I don't know if my va these values are going through or not. Right, so I, I know at the end of this, right, this is firing. Oh, wait, hold on. Yeah, so this is not actually an element, right? So I got to keep going. I got to go find its input. But, but my input Alright, and then my input. And now I should see, see all those values populate like so. Alright, so now I'm getting all these different names. Alright, so right now I kind of left it as required because I really, really, really don't want to deal. Oh, I really don't want to deal with some things. I, I really don't want to deal with too much validation. I just want to make sure that the information is coming up. And then a log as neat, and then I'm just going to add the validation as necessary. So now, what I see here are my, um, so now what I see here are my options. So I want to go ahead and work on that, right? So I got my input fields working, and then I take my options fields. This is going to get more intricate. Right, I think I had a function. I don't know if this is available. So, like set of so I think this is ultimately a list item, but if I'm not mistaken, now it's a button. So, it's the div right? That's its container, right? And now there's like a series of buttons here that we have. Equal field dot query select all button console log options Some text areas. Okay. All right, so those are the values like so. So let's kind of get rid of my console logs. They're kind of getting distraction. 
that kind of comes into distraction. Alright, so practically what I want to happen is that this is set up to choose one option, so I just want to basically select a random option for an array, and I have a function for that. So, array.from And then I want to say select random. Huh. See. Should have this somewhere in the application. I'm sure of it. in the utility service now. Very right, well, this dot select service dot select right an option per way. Right, so basically, you know, this is a utility function, right? I'm just selecting a random option per array, it has no business value, like I can't use it out. It's not meaningful for any of these pages. Ultimately, it serves as functionality, right? There's no business call value to it, right? So, always for your utility functions, like functions that have no business value, just they're just very, very important functions. You want to try to place them in, like, in a all together. So here I have common utils, right? So at a utility service. But also, I have them. In, I have them as well. Give a JavaScript functions for those of you who are not in Angular, right? You can also put them as regular JavaScript functions, right? You have linked lists, right? This is something that shouldn't go on the class, right? Update class string. This is something that's used in my in my param classes, right? That live outside of components that don't have access to the utility service. So once I probably need logic. Outside of the utility service, I'll probably put that there as well. All right, so there it is. Right, so there's my options fields. All right, so if I go ahead and hit submit, let's try to see our values. Right. Hopefully, our, our values kind of come along here. Really, yeah, that's the ultimate goal. This kind of happens a lot where Opera decides to set it with close. Very interesting why. But get a value. All right, so my items are getting populated. So that's really, really nice. So now what I want to work on is social media uploads, right? And the file uploads, I can't really automate that, right? I'll use end-to-end -end opt automation. There's no way because JavaScript doesn't allow you to um, go into a user's computer and just go through their files. That's a huge security risk, right? So I might as well just take this out since I'm not even using. I'm not even going to be using it. Maybe one day, but you know that's not today. But but that is not today, All right? So for each, right? So basically, right? What I'm looking for. So let input my input, and then also when you're when you're using variables and their name might be too generic, such as like input or let, I always like to preface it with my, so that you know that will take care of that issue. So I don't get any, so my code will start to act with right. So in here, I'm practically looking for an input. So my console.log my input all right so i get no really 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 don't want don't want that to happen um because i know in this chip field there's an input is there or there a text area right so the text area instead of input such a text area right 
So now text area, I want to go ahead and fill it with a value. So my input dot value, and then I want to see if there's faker dot I want to see if there's a social media here I could leverage. Internet dots. So these are properties. No, these are functions. It's a method, right? So it's a bad name and convention, right? You always want to, you know, methods. You want to be able to name them as verbs, right? So it's like create email, create emoji. Because I'm looking at them right now through the list. I'm thinking of properties without, without the extra intelligence, but... So avatar, random avatar URL. That's okay. Let's try to see if there's something for username. All right, so I think I'll just use avatar for now. All right, and then I'll put, and then I have to fit. Obviously, I'll, what will need to happen is I need to hit enter. Right. I just need to hit enter as, as, I, as I provide it. So I want to go ahead and dispatch that event. Once I hit enter, right, so that's the goal. So basically, Kind of want to dispatch the key down event, right? So I have to go over to my utility service because I haven't really had to do this before, but now I do. U T I L I T Y. I'm really just going to rename it to utility service, so I, I kind of know how to spell it out. Um, so event dispatcher, event modern. So basically, I think there's a keyboard event. Right, so I want to look at its. Right, so there's that keyboard event, right? So I say key down. So So I say new. See key code. Okay. So usually that leads to enter key, right? So so basically, right? Um, I I kind of what I want to want to do here is. I want to make an if statement, right? So let event modern else. I said it's kind of unexpected in the turn in the grand scheme of things. So if If key down, key up, and then definitely put in the comments the additional events, right? And I'll be sure to include them. Event, and then I want to be able to say event, and then key 13. All right, so for right now, All right, so it looks like this is not dispatching the way I, I would like. So JavaScript dispatch 
enter enter and I don't even think it's allowed log alright so this is what and this is known as antenna automation right and this is why you want to use automation software you don't want to do this directly with JavaScript right so what I'm gonna I'm gonna do here I'm just gonna copy out their logic they have a lot of upvotes I didn't get to see had 10 uploads, right? All right, and I'll look at that, right? So that actually kind of worked as intended. So key board char code, probably um, number, set that default to 13. So basically, where I'm just going to have a huge, this is going to be a, um, a, a huge list. Um, event, init, dict, um, obj. All right, so let's say, let's say 13. I'll we'll just equal this logic, piece of logic right here. Say let, and now I'll just replace it like so. Right, so I expect that object to get very big one day. If anyone one knows the libraries that I could use, right, and then also how to implement that, um, leveraging um, leveraging uh, legacy events, just in case. Like I just keep this code here. It's no reason not to remove it. Maybe someone visits the site on Internet Explorer. At least something will work, right? So it's not going to work, but definitely or develop it on Internet Explorer because definitely you don't want me doing this here, right? So those are some value. Those are some values. Those values are a bit too long, I, I suppose. Kind of want to like split this out. Definitely don't feel like that value should be coming along. Let's try to see if I could get another dot color. Oh, let's just make a bigger that internet that user name so that so that's more real. Now let's put a slash in between the two. All right, so that looks like a, a social media handle from. But you know, there's only social so many social media websites. Madam Beast, right? So that kind of looks good enough for me. And I also, I'll definitely like to put more padding. I think there is padding, but I think the way the button is set up, it's not gonna allow for that. Right. So there's that. Right. So now all I need to do now is do the file upload. Like like I said, you really can't do file uploads. This actually, there's something I could do. Right. There's something I could do. I kind of could generate a file. I kind of could generate a file. Now that I think of it, I can actually generate a file. Uh, but the thing is, how am I going to get that file? How am I going to get that file? All the way, all the way. So basically, I have to trigger a certain event, right? So let's try to rethink this through, because we do not have to trigger an event. I do not have to trigger that. Uh, 
file dropped. Right? I, I do not have to trigger that. Right? So. It's just that. Right? And then the event's going to be an array of files. Right? So. See my input. So the change event, right? I have to send something along, right? So basically, I'm looking at the files, right? So basically, actually, you know, I think I can do something here, right? So and now I can generate big data. Upload. Now I could generate fake data. I've done it before, just never doing it again. All right, so I do no way. So no way I can make this work. Yeah, so let's go ahead and say, he, Yep, file list. All right, so, so basically, I need a new file list. So I don't even know. All right, so it looks like I have an instance. So, Okay, so there's that. So that's a new file. I don't know if this is supposed to be string data. I think it's supposed to be binary.
Yes, I keep being illegal to destruct the... I hope I don't get a legal constructor. Yeah, I'll keep y'all a legal constructor. Right, there's a way to do it. Yeah, so it's actually working. I'm not too, sh too, too, too sure. Sure, this logic. Put this in the utility service. <clears throat> All right, might as well put that in the automation service. If our flat and so it doesn't think it's there. XHR blog so I want to say this that Jerry Fox looking around so we find find the logic that we need Law builder is not a constructor, right? So I, so I figured. It's earlier. I 
that. Yeah, I forgot. I figured. So, now 2000 was 18. Yeah, data transfer list. Right. Check this out. Wait, let's see how this looks. Tight there, I believe we'll construct there again. Oh. That is interesting. No, that, I, I don't believe, I can't believe that's the case. Is this Angular or JavaScript? Yeah, so. Oh. Yeah, I think this is Angular. Oh, that's interesting. So it's the problem of Angular, not necessarily JavaScript. Ooh, this is really not good. I don't know why Angular is throwing this. So many things about TS config. <laughs> All right, so this is going to take a while, so I'm going to pause the video. All right, so, um, you know, after a while, what I what I eventually decided, right, is that basically, all right, what I'm going to do, I'm going to hijack this, right? This is per specifically for automation purposes, all right? I'm going to hide that. Automation purposes. All right, so then production, this should never run, right? As, as I expect this functionality to never run as well. All right, so basically I'm just gonna provide that array. So generate files. Right, and then I think I saw a sample where it like pulled the information and did that as well, so I'm gonna Yeah, that looks. All right, so let, let's try to see if I get all my values. All right, so I know I know this should have fired, but it kind of did it. So this dot choose files. Let's see what happens. Ah. 
but it's kind of empty, so it kind of thinks it's empty. Let's see, file list, because I know I, I passed it. Wait, I, yeah, I know I passed it in, but... Right, it doesn't have a length, right? So I know file, file list is going to have a value in it. It should really have a value in it, but I might get a nasty error. All right, would you look at that? <laughs> right, so that's how I was able to hijack it. All right, so let's definitely clean this up. All right, let's give our file a name. File.txt. And then basically, so blob property that, right? So let's go. So a blob really doesn't get a name, so let's try to say new file. So let's so link this foo.json. So now I'm thinking about it, it's like a serious security hack, right? But there, there should be no way to allow that happen, right? Since I don't, right? so so that um, this function doesn't get added on in uh, production, right? So now this form is valid. So now I can go ahead and continue to connect it to the data um, to the integrate with the api so thanks for watching please like share and subscribe most importantly reach out to me in the comments for any help tips and suggestions